Let's turn to somebody sitting next to you. Thank God I'm a Baptist. Amen. Father, we pray for this morning as we share from your word that your word will bring light. The entrance of your word giveth light. I pray that your word will work in us and make us what we are supposed to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today I'll be sharing on parenting. I have just 30 minutes and my time starts now. And um, I, I will have my message for one hour. So what I'm going to do is the first session is just 30 minutes. If you're interested in the second session, you wait behind or you will listen to it online. Because it's so wide and broad. I'm reading from New King James Version, Job chapter 14. What a place to start with parenting. All the way back to Job that suffered a lot. But don't worry, we'll get there. For there's hope for a tree. If it is cut down, that it will sprout again. There's hope for a tree that if it be cut down, it will do what? Sprout again. And I stand that shoot will not cease. Though its roots may grow old in the earth and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will board and bring forth branches like a plant. If there's hope for a tree that if it be cut down, it will, sprout, it will sprout again. Then no matter how bad or terrible your child is, he can still make it. Amen. 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 I said he can still make it. Amen. Amen. Even children that are challenged from birth can still make it. Why? There is hope for a tree that if it be cut down and its tender shoots cease, its roots grow old in the earth, it stomp, die in the ground. At the scent of water, what will happen? It will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. Never give up on your children because you dedicated them. Hallelujah. In our church, we don't baptize children. You get baptized when you come to the age of realization. But we dedicate children. We name them. And then they are brought up in the home where God reigns. No matter what happens, God will complete the work in Jesus' name. But the problem is, is Jesus reigning in our homes? Because what is here is not that there's hope for a tree that if it be cut down and dumped in the Atlantic, it will sprout again. There's no hope for a tree if it be cut down and dumped in fire. But the tree must be where there is what? The scent of water. Yet, at the scent of water, it will board. So, cutting it down is one thing. Its shoot season is something else. Its root dying is something else. If it is in the wrong place, it's not, there's no hope for it. And obviously there's hope for a tree. If you cut down and it can perceive the scent of water, the presence of the Spirit, the presence of God, in the presence of God there's fullness of joy and at his right hand there's what? There are pleasures forever. We need conducive environment for parenting. Children don't just sprout. There must be the scent of water around them. What kind of homes are we raising? By the way, my, I didn't come with my family because my children are, are too independent to come. They're above 30. <laughs> one married with a child, the other one. They don't follow you. Once children pass teenage, the boys in particular, they tell you, I want to be on my own. And I can't blame them because I ran away from First Baptist Church to New York State Baptist Church. So if my children don't follow me, I'm reaping what? So, okay. My son, my younger son brought a girl one day to church. He said, this is going to be my wife. I said, is she born again? He said, let's talk about that separately. And called me to the corner and said, she's not born again like us. Are you getting me? Not born again like us, but she's born again, but not like us. I said, who are we? He said, you and mom are old time revivalists. Are you getting me? We are not like you old-time revivalists. I said, who are you then? 
So we are born again, that's all. <laughs> At the scent of water, it will burn. Amen. And Job chapter 4, verse 7. Remember now, whoever perished being, remember now, whoever perished being innocent. Or where were the upright ever caught up? Verse 8, which is the key verse. Even as I have seen, those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. By the blast of God, they perish. And by the breath of his anger, they, they are consumed. Those who plow iniquity. In other words, if you raise children in a toxic environment, what will happen? You sow trouble. Job 4 verse 8. If you sow, if you plant trouble, what does it say? What does it say? What does it say? I can't hear. What does it say? Reap the same. I'm starting the foundation of this thing by saying that apple trees don't grow in Lagos. Plantain trees don't grow in Kano. Granuts don't grow in Benin. Every plant must be sown in an appropriate soil. Am I correct? Am I correct? What are you planting? And what soil are you planting the seed? Thank God for God. He's a wonderful sower. He went out to sow and allowed someone to fall by the wayside. Are your kids falling by the wayside? Are you allowing your kids to fall among thorns? You know the parable? We don't need to preach that. Or they are falling on the rocky soil, or they are falling on good ground. One of the challenges we have today in the country is that people are not raised. They just appear. Ask your neighbor, are you raised? It's important, if you want to even get married, find out whether the person you want to get married to is raised, has been raised, was raised. If a person is not raised, you are already entering into predetermined trouble. Adam was not raised. He just appeared. As he appeared, so he fell. When the second Adam came, he stayed in the womb for nine months. He was born. He did not start ministry till he was 30. What was happening between minus nine months? You know, when you are in the womb, it's minus nine. When you are born, it's zero. Am I correct? You start counting your birthday when? When? But when did life really start? I said, when did life really start? In the womb. Jesus had to be conceived. I had to wait for nine months in the womb. God could have just sent Jesus like an angel and would just appear Bagam. And likely appear in Rome or in the palace of Herod. But it was conceived, it was delivered, and it wasn't yet time. He waited till when? Till he was 30. Ask your neighbor, were you raised? A healthy relationship involves five things, I'm going to say, that will form a soil for children to be raised. One, a healthy relationship involves mutual caring. Children want to grow up and see father and mother caring for each other. For instance, the drama we watched, both of them were guilty. When the father came in and didn't see the wife at home, he should have called the wife first before calling the son. Hello, somebody? Hello? And you ought to have known that there's quite a practice on that day if you are going to the same church. You ought to have known what it is before choir practice now. Women's, something happened before choir practice. Eh? You ought to have known that his wife goes to church on Saturday morning. And you ought to have known that the wife sleeps in church. Are you getting me? No, no. There are some things, if you are going to have a successful marriage, there are some things that you may not like, but you must come to accept. Hello? After struggling and struggling and struggling for some time, you, you stop arguing about some things that are not evil, but they are choices. 
That's the choice the woman has taken. It's not the best. But if you are going to change the woman, it's not by saying, and you are in church counseling people in the presence of the son. And what stops him from bringing out something from the freezer in the first place and warming? Hello, somebody? It's not the best, but it's not your wife preparing it and putting it on the table that makes it sweeter. We men must learn to wake up and take responsibility. The man took a prepared lunch for the boy and called his wife, where are you? It's not everything people do that should lead to quarrel. We should learn to, I mean, God loved us while we are yet sinners. If Christ has been worried and battling with us when we are born, we will never get saved. Mutual caring. Two, children want to grow under the canopy, the scent of water, respect. If a child does not see respect in a home of mutual respect, husband must respect his wife, his wife must respect the husband, there is nothing like totalitarian submission. Women don't submit because they are commanded to submit. They submit because they are loved. And so they don't even have any other choice than to submit to somebody who loves you. It's difficult to submit to somebody who criticizes, plays on your intelligence, hates you, and he wants you to submit. That is like submitting to Boko Haram. Respect is mutual. Respect is reciprocal. If you don't respect me, I will force myself, I'll be under a, a constraint, a push. It will be very difficult to respect you if you don't respect me. Even if I respect you, I'll be doing it with tears. Turn to your neighbor and say, make my life easier. Make my life easier. Make my life easier. Make my life easier. Then if it's your wife sitting next to you, tell your wife, help me to love you. Tell your husband, help me to love you. Make loving you easier for me. Don't let me die trying to love you. Amen. Number three, compassion. They send the water that will make the tree, don't cut down, but again, compassion. Compassion is not just love. Compassion is empathy. I feel it. I feel it for you. Now, the woman who had her own issues, she could have told her husband, knowing her husband was coming that back that day, honey, I'll be in church. Well, I've, there's something in the freezer. I brought out your food. It is thawing. When you come, just warm it. I love you. Could have done that. And when she finished from counseling session, she was going to choir practice. Guess what? I was blocked by the choir master. I tried to dodge. The man's anointing could not allow me to dodge. And now we're in choir practice. You can't believe it. My heart is not here. But I'm still singing. Then when the, when the pastor blocked her again, guess what? Your friend, senior pastor, has blocked me. Wanting me to do extra counseling. May God forgive him. I mean, you can, you can, you can make life easier. I told him to know, I say, make this thing easy for me. That's compassion. Number four, an interest. What makes the scent of water and makes things to grow and makes the tree do cut down to bud is an interest in our partner's welfare and growth. You must show interest. That woman says she's doing the work of God. You knew her before you married her that she's a church crazy person. You don't begin to say, is that what you have been teaching? If you have an interest in her, that, that listen, she overdid it. But if you are going to learn how to live with people, we must learn how to live with their crazy ways. God stopped giving wife in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam said, the woman that thou gavest me. Hallelujah. God started saying, he that findeth a wife. I gave one man wife. I have not rested since that day. He, the woman thou gavest me. Now he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtains pleasure from the Lord. Go and look for one. When you come to church, they don't say, who is the wife God gave you? They ask you a question. Who gave it this woman to this man? Your father comes out. They don't say God. It's not God that comes out. Then they ask you, will you love her? Will you take her? To be your only wife? Forget her. They will ask you, will you? They don't say, God will give you the... You will you? Will you? Will you? After you have taken her, we eat rice, we eat stew, we leave you. What you have taken 
is what you will stay with all your life. Don't say the woman thou givest me again. Say the woman I found. You saw better ones, you chose this. The woman you found. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are the woman I found. Make things easy for me. Amen. 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 So interest in your partner's welfare and growth means your children see you showing interest in your partner's welfare. How is mommy doing? I want my wife to get a BSc. I want my husband to do well. I want my wife to progress in work. And at times, if you are showing interest in my welfare, it may mean that you yourself may have to sacrifice some things. Am I wrong? Interest simply means if you agree for me to do well in life, in doing well in life, I may come home late. In progressing in life, you may have to stay up late sometimes and help me to do some calculations. Lastly, ability to share control and decision making in a home. A home that children can grow in, you know, the shared control. Our sons are seeing our fathers as authoritarian, autocratic, wife beaters. Any boy that grows up, any boy that grows up in a home where his mother is beating will likely beat his wife. Children learn from examples more than from teachings. True or false? If you sow trouble, what do you reap? The same. So, shared control and decision making. Shared control and decision making. Shared decision making in the home. Let the son, let the daughter know that mommy and dad make decisions together. In short, a shared desire for each other's happiness. What do we have today? Toxic homes. A toxic relationship is a relationship characterized by behaviors on the part of the toxic partner that are emotionally Physically damaging to the other partner. That's a toxic home. Emotionally and physically damaging. These are all just preambles. These are the kinds of homes we are running. And our homes are frequently, even though we have a billboard in a home, Christ is the head of this home, a present listener to every conversation, blah, 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 blah. The children don't see Christ. Toxic relationships pop up in both our personal, parent, child, siblings, friendships, and occupational lives. You lend the family member money or you give your husband something and he gets spoiled in his hands, he doesn't say sorry. He burns the rice, burns the beans, and abandons the pots there and leaves everything in the kitchen. You come back from the kitchen, you can't come back from work, you can't find where you kept your magi again. You can't find where you kept your pot again. You can't find where your microwave again. Your microwave is on top, it's inside the freezer. Next time your husband says, I want to cook, you say, Don't worry, I <laughs> will do it. Eh? Because the last time, just a pot of soup, five magi cubes vanished. Just a pot of soup. Now, if you do something wrong in a toxic, a toxic person does something wrong, he doesn't owe you an apology. Instead, he expects you to understand and forget it. That's how God made me. If all of us begin to behave like that, there'll be civil wars in our homes. When you live with a toxic partner, you feel hurt. You feel taken advantage of. You feel angry frequently at the offender. You are consistently being brought down. You are consistently, consistently being made to feel like a nobody. You are belittled. You are slighted. You are made fun of. Your weakness is the talk of the family. You are shouted upon. You are used, abusive words are used against you. And guess what? The tree that has been cut down is listening to all these things and it cannot budge. So parenting, children, teens, and youths, drug abuse, cybercrime, we can't do all those things. But you see, I'll just quickly say that there are different types of parenting. But the first thing is, if the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? The foundation is what I've just mentioned now. Number two, if the rod of the wicked, 
rests on the lot of the righteous. The righteous will be forced to do evil. If the rod of the wicked rests on what? The lot, the land, the property, the heart, the soul of the righteous. If you are married to somebody that is carrying a issue, the rod of the wicked, the person is wicked. Not just that, like I said yesterday, there are Christian standards. So we expect that you marry the Christian. But when you, after the marriage, masks fall. Masks. Watch who you thought was a brother. What you saw in church was persona, personality. Who you are living with is a character. Character is who you are when nobody is watching you in the dark. You can't keep persona, charisma for too long. You'll be caught. If you are pretending, like I said yesterday, if love is blind, marriage is an eye-opener with telescope, glasses, binocular, and we see everything. In marriage, you can't hide for too long. The chips will be down. And we know who is carrying the masquerade. The day you know who is behind the ayo or the masquerade, and you know it's your cousin, John, carrying, will you fear the masquerade again? If you don't say, ah, John, take your time. Oh. In marriage, removes the masks. Children know their dad. Husbands know their wives. Wives know their husbands. That's why sometimes when you see my husband, when you see some women, I say, oh, madam, is this your husband? He's a wonderful man. At work, he's a go-to person. He's so loving. The woman will say, eh? Hey, didn't come. I can donate my husband to you. Since you say he's a wonderful person, I will donate him to you in three months' time. You will donate him to Loma. <laughs> what is that? That is the woman that has seen character. Is that not so? But at work, hey, Mr. Jones. Hey, Mr. Jones. Hey, Mr. At home. Mr. Jones, who? This is not your office, so we know you. That's why sometimes when some men are preaching, their wives just begin to use WhatsApp and be looking at other Why? <laughs> who is talking here? Who is talking here? You know? So, Children want to see reality. So we have, I was just talking about five. I just mentioned them because there's so much. To talk about. If you're going to raise children, you have to decide what you want to do before you get married. And when you are married, before the children come, you must prepare the scent of water. You must allow, you must prepare the family. Children are prepared from the womb. They're not prepared when they are born. Medicine has taught us that Antenatal, antenatal care. First trimester, second trimester, third trimester, eighth trimester, three months. And the process of delivery. And the immediate 10 minutes after delivery are enough to determine IQ. A child born that does not cry within the first 10 minutes cannot go to university. Forget it. Hypoxia. There's oxygen, in, no oxygen entering the brain. Because when the child is in the womb, it collects oxygen from the placenta. The child does not use the nose or the mouth for anything in the womb. The chest is collapsed. The lungs are collapsed. It doesn't need the lungs. It only uses the heart for pumping of blood. The blood that carries oxygen and nutrients comes from the placenta. When the child is born, he doesn't know that his nose is for breathing. That's why they spank children when they are born in Nigeria. Over there, they rub their backs. It's child abuse to beat a child to cry. You rub their backs, turn them upside down, and the child cries. That first crying of the child is the first air entering the lungs and makes the lungs. That's why a child can be born, because the chest is collapsed. The lungs are collapsed. So when the child is coming out through the birth canal, the chest is not there. The head is... is, 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 is um, folded together, like, the chest is folded, it comes out. Immediately it comes out, you take the first, uh, 
the chest widens and enters the lungs, from the lungs to the brain. If the child is born and the first five minutes, they are still beating the child, seven minutes beating the child, 10 minutes beating the child, 15 minutes beating the child, you will beat the child till he dies when the child is born. So you have to continue to use cane. And at the end of the day, what has happened? You have given birth to cerebral palsy. Lack of oxygen at the point of birth. Can't go to, he can. With modern technology, interest, efforts, a child can do well. It will take you all your life. So a child has to be born in a proper place. Children born, for instance, in good hospitals will do better than children born in, in, uh, on the, they just give birth to them and a native midwife just kept the child in one corner. Children born by CS, cesarean section, are likely more, going to be more intelligent than those born through the birth canal. Those born through the birth canal trek to Abuja. Those born through CS came by plane. <laughs> because he didn't, he didn't struggle. He didn't, not the CS, after, after three days of, of labor, you just got elective. You just bring a pump. That's, that's, that's plain. That's landing at Heathrow. Are you getting me? Now, the, it's painful for the mother. It's expensive and everything, but that's just it. Why? He doesn't need to be beaten too much. But going through a process of birth that you're in labor for 24 hours is like trekking to Abuja. When you come at you, too, we know what you have gone through. And the way a child is taken care of the first few months, the kind of food, breastfeeding is best. In fact, a child doesn't need to drink water when the child is born. The breast milk has everything, protein, nutrient, and water. The child doesn't need ever, doesn't need butter, doesn't need anything for the first few weeks. Water is now supplemented. After some time, milk is supplemented. After some time, a child must breastfeed for at least six months. Children that are breastfed are better than children that are taking cow milk and are not behaving like cows. But eventually, by the time they reach a particular age, they mix the two. And another age, they move to good food. Children that grow up eating nice meals, protein and, and, and rich meals, do better than children that take carbohydrate meals. At the end of the day, Indomie is not food. Indomie is for the poor. That's why it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap when compared to real food. It may be expensive for you. Are you getting me? Anything that is too easy to do, be careful about it. You get to the port, say, I can get your car out tomorrow morning. Don't agree. You. Tell them that eh, 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 eh. if it comes easily, it will go easily. How can you prepare a meal, put it there like three minutes you are eating? There's something wrong somewhere. Are you getting me? <laughs> and of course, the ingredients there, monosodium glutamate, all those things are dangerous. Are you getting me? We don't need to go into all that, you know? We don't want to demarket any product here. Exactly, there's somebody here who works for whatever. So, but it's not the best. It's not the best. It's not the best. It is for a lazy man. Lazy mothers and lazy fathers. If your child grows up on Indomie, you can't do better than a child that ate real food. Fish, egg. And so you put in your egg on top of Indomie. You know, when children come to the hospital and they are crying, they don't want to enter the I say, I'm sure it's because your mommy didn't feed you well. In my clinic with the mother, the child will look at me and say, your mommy give you good food. Look at me and say, is it not Indomie you like? He say, yes. But your mommy is giving you uh, rice. Yes. Do you like rice on I want you to do me? I say, come there, give me a high five. They give me a high five because they know I know the secret. All children love Indomie. But parents know that Indomie is not the best. All right. So we can now children grow up. What kind of parenting do we have? Parenting itself, parenting itself is a big task. It's the process of raising a child from birth to independent adulthood. Independent adulthood. In Europe and America, parenting ends at 18. Children go out, they go to work, they go to school. I mean, they go to university. Parenting has stopped. When does parenting stop in Africa? Yes. 
It stops at 35. Some people, no, no, the average age today of children living home and being less reliant on their parents is 35. We raise children, we follow them to do common entrance, we go to them to do jump, we go to them to university, we go to them when they are married, we are still parenting from home. Are you getting me? Have your husband eating today? We go there to do Omugo. Omugo is still parenting. Independent adulthood means you don't need your parents anymore. We even find jobs for our children. We monitor the interview. We monitor their promotion. We go back again to monitor their delivery. We go back again to be there. <sighs> when I was going for common entrance, my father didn't know where Oliver Baptist High School was. Didn't know where, we don't apply to so many secondary schools. Uh, uh, the Baptist, uh, this, this, this. We applied to Baptist Academy, we applied to Bobby College, we applied, applied. We went by ourselves. They dropped me at Ido in the, in the bus. My parents had cars. They said, you'll find your way. I know you said those days there was no kidnapping. There was boom, 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 there was no kidnapping. Carry picking, carry picking. Now what you have is bob bag, bob bag. They are carrying our bar now. Are you getting me? All right. So the facilitating, of, the facilitating the upbringing of a child through all stages of development, caring for and nurturing the child. That is parenting. So parenting is a process of raising a child from birth to independent adulthood. But what we have now is that many of us have outsourced parenting. We sit at home. We bring a lesson to the child in. We don't check our children's homework. We outsource parenting to the housemaid, outsource parenting to grandma, outsource parenting to everything until our children to become outsourced. They start doing outsource father, outsource mother. They will begin to outsource father. They will outsource mother. They say, Who's your father? My father is not the one at home. My real father is this man. He's the one that raised me. Who is the one at home? Spam do not. Your donated sperm and waka out. So, the different types of parenting quickly, you have authoritarian parenting. Authoritarian parenting is such that you, is the most traditional type of parenting. The parents are clearly in charge and children are expected to fall in line no matter what. That's authoritarian, not authoritative. Authoritarian. authoritarian. That's why you hear things like, I'm your father. You do as I say. So kids whose parents are authoritarian, they have an advantage. They know exactly where the boundaries are and the consequences of violating them. They know what it is that they must enter a car and where I grew up in an authoritarian home. You don't ask questions. You just believe that this is what is done in this house. And my father will tell you, when you have your own house, hmm, you can do what you like. But when you are here, hmm, this is what we do here. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Right. So, I'll quickly run to the next one. Permissive parenting. In permissive parenting is the polar opposite of authority. In permissive parenting, parents want to be their children's best friend. So, they spoil them. It makes them, makes parents to appear very nurturing, but the problem is there are no limits. If you always allow your child to do whatever they want, they will never understand that in the real world, there are consequences to their actions. I mean, my children never had tablets at five. They won't touch my phone at five. But as in church, I even see some people, when their children are crying, they give them phone to play with. They give them phone. Every time a child cries, feed the bottle in the mouth. That plastic they put in the mouth when children are crying. What's the name again? Pacifier. It's not pacifying anything. The child just um, pushes it in the mouth. And the child grows up. When pacifier is no more there, he puts his thumb in his mouth. Children that push the thumb in their mouth, they force their teeth to come out. When they grow up, their mouth is like Why? Frequently pushing the incisors and the canines forward, the teeth now come forward. Tell your neighbor unintended consequences. 
Permissive parenting can also force children to make too many choices before they are ready. You know? So you make your child to begin to do anything. You can put on the TV what you like. You can watch any program you like. But don't go to that section. No, it's too bad. It's too bad. You don't want to sit down with them. Authoritative parents, unlike the authoritarian parents, the third one is authoritative. I have just one and a half minutes more. Authoritative, so authoritative parents enforce rules. But they do that through discussing. They don't just tell children, you don't try that in this house. They like arrive at a parliamentary discussion, at a parliamentary decision with their children. You see, it's not good to do without your seatbelt. Children below the age of five don't sit in front. Because the, 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 the airbag will kill them. You don't carry children on your laps when driving. They will die if there's an accident. The wheel will press them against your stomach. The seatbelt will not protect them. When you, have a, a, when, you have, when you hit another car, the children will be thrown out of the car. You don't carry. I said, Daddy, I want to sit on your lap. You cannot sit here. It's not right. The child now knows why. And they explain to them the reasons behind them. In authoritative homes, the kids are welcome to provide input and ask questions. They may not get the final answer, but they understand why mommy said we don't put our hands in the fire. Rather than telling them, just do as I say, you're able to have a dialogue, response, and you're flexible. Just mention the last two. I don't read them. Uninvolved and neglectful parenting. Like I said, if you want to continue, you wait for the second service. If not, you watch it online. Uninvolved and neglectful parenting. In this one, uninvolved parents are completely hands off. Their mantra is, do what you want. I really don't care. This is not permissive. This is that they are never there. People who are raised by uninvolved parents are more prone to anxiety and depression. Imagine if you had an absent parent who neglected all your needs and didn't provide for you. You might feel like you are not important. And as a, those are the kind of husbands and wives many of us get married to at the end of the day. And so they don't understand where you are coming from. I came from a home where you bring your results to your father. Your father will go through each subject with you. I remember once I came first in March and I was smiling. And my father said, but you got 65%. What are you happy about? And you came first with 65%. Your mates are all Olodos. You are just a champion among the Olodos. That you got 65% and then you have that. Do you know that thing you do? Before you go to school, the night before going to body house, a long lecture. How I was born without shoes. How my father trekked to school. How in his days, his father did not have a car. Over every, every term, how money does not grow on treetops. So I've heard of that one before. How you cannot kill me. <laughs> how you come on holiday, you run around, and now you want me to pay, you give you money. Do you know how I get my money? You will not kill me, this boy. You will not kill me. Meanwhile, the school fees is radio. This is just your lecture. I thought I used to wonder that God. I wish I had scholarship. I will not just come home. I will just go. What is all this long story for? Give me the money. Why did you bring me to this world? If you don't have money, why are this long story? But I won't say those things. So your hands are your back. <laughs> You're not going back. If you like, get last. You'll be a mechanic. You'll be a vulcanizer. You will be carrying load. Allah Aru. You'll be carrying load in the market. Go to school. Do whatever you like. We are here waiting for you. Now, when you have what, what is the background of your wife? What's the background of your husband? If your wife or your husband came from neglectful parenting, you are going to be the first person to parent your spouse. You will tell him how to clean toilet after urinating. You will tell him how not to stand on the WC and squat and break it. You will tell him how to eat without opening his mouth. Because he never had anybody to tell him. You will tell him that. You will be the first one to tell your husband or your wife for the first time in your life. You don't lie on the bed with your suit. Came back from work, remove your suit. Take a shower. And he will tell you, I shit for body. You say, no. Take a shower in the morning. Take a shower at night. He say, why? I won't. 
you are the first parent he ever met. And that's why there are challenges. And that's why our children should learn. Helicopter parenting. Helicopter parenting is just a style. It's not really in the book, but it's one that has gotten a lot of attention recently. Is that parents end up micromanaging their child's life. They help them do their homework. They stand outside in jam. And we're going to say, Sean, answer all the questions, oh. You are, you, are, you, are, you are even chewing gum in the examination hall. You are disgracing me. Don't, don't, don't leave anyone left and don't know. They will stand outside the examination hall. They are sweating. They are sweating. If they are... <laughs> Let's not go there. So, so, so this false micromanage. The problem with over-involved parenting is helicopter parenting is that it doesn't prepare children for the real world and doesn't equip them with resilience. You know, the last one, free-range parenting. In free-range parenting... You trust kids to do more by themselves. You allow them to walk to school without parents following them. You allow them to prepare simple meals, figure out how to pass the time when they are bored, allow them to know what to do with their time. You are there. It has a combination of authoritative. You discuss with them, but you give them the chance. You watch them from a distance. You allow them to make friends. You go and find out the kind of friends they have made, and you now correct them. Second service, I'll be talking about possible health challenges of infants, school children, adults at the group. I'll be looking at defects at birth, skin conditions, cleft lip, developmental dysplasia of the lip, how children grew up with challenges. I'm looking at challenges in primary school. I'm marketing the second service. Challenges in primary school, junior secondary school, substance abuse, sexual and reproductive health, violence prevention, unintentional injury, and how you make children to understand bullying, bullying prevention, you know, internet safety, media literacy, and things like that. You prevent, then I will talk about how these children can be caught in what they are doing and how you can help them, you know, from overreaction to mistakes, continuous self-depreciation, sudden speech disorders, inappropriate emotional responses to painful situations, neurotic behavior, hair twisting, thumb sucking, rocking chair, self-mutilation, fear of parents being contacted, extremes of passivity or aggression. Now, these are all things we are going to see in the second service. These are things we are going to see in the second service. So, if a tree be cut down, there's hope for it. If there's scent of water, how are you raising your children? What is the nature of the soil? Loamy, sandy, humorous. What's the nature of the soil? What soil do you have in your home? Toxic relationship? Your children, if you sow trouble, you will reap the same. Shall we pray? Maybe you are here today. You are not even born again. You have not given your life to Christ. The Bible says... For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Who are you? Have you met Christ? You can't run a home by yourself. With God, all things are possible. You have to commit your ways unto the Lord and he will direct your paths. The Bible says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. If the treasure in your heart is bad, you can't bring forth good things. I'm challenging you today, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't do it by yourself. By strength shall no man prevail. But if you give your life to Christ, you cannot do this. It's not by my, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. For there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Are you born again? If you don't have the spirit of God, you can't do these things. No wonder the Bible says, you have the spirit of God that may be like him. You want to give your life to Christ this morning, just where you are, just sit down and say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my life right now. Make me a new creature. Let all things pass away. I want to change in my attitude to my wife, my attitude to God. I want to start a family all time in my house. I've not been able to do it. Jesus, come into my life, forgive me my sins, and become not just my Savior, but my Lord. Take control of my life that I may reflect your glory. Let me become a new creature. All things will pass away. All things will become new. Father, visit me, Lord. I want to receive you today. Come into my life. 
In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for those who are going through a lot in parenting. They know the Bible says if the situation is bad, the foundation is destroyed, what the righteous do? I pray for those that they are lot. The rod of the wicked is resting on their land, on their family. Wickedness and evil is the motto of the family. And so the children are just resembling you. You can look back at how you have raised your children and you regret the things you've been doing in your home. Having sex in the presence of your children. Doing all kinds. Allowing your children to watch pornography. Allowing your children to behave anyhow. Because two of you cannot even come together and agree on the rules in the home. Say, God, forgive us where we have failed as parents, oh God. Help us, oh God, to change the rules by changing ourselves and by establishing the proper rules based on the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for what we have heard today. We pray that all things will work together for our good, oh God. That a time we come on our children we become examples to behold in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together. If by any means you gave your life to Christ during the course of the service, after the service, there will be people who can meet the leaders of the church and they know what to do with you. If you want to see me for brief counseling between now and the Sunday school, before the second service or after Sunday school, I'm available. Shall we put our hands together for a senior pastor and a wife? And uh, as shall I be. Amen. <laughs> Love you, sir.